So with Etherpad being nearly five years old, I figured it was kind of time that we should recap and see where it's kind of come from and where it's gone to. Now, the oldest instance um, available that I know of is Etherpad's uh, old instance. And this is what it used to look like. So we're looking at the old Etherpad now. Um, had quite a few warts, things that kind of didn't work very well. Um, didn't have much functionality. Here we can see one of our famous bugs. Um, and it wasn't very stable, uh, spends about 10% of its time down. Um, uh, so we decided to rewrite it. And we rewrote it about three years ago. And since then, there's been a lot of progress. Uh, we're used by most um, major organizations now. Um, lots of companies and um, businesses are using the software and lots of schools and education uh, establishments. So that's great. And you can see why. Uh, things got really, really pretty. Um, we also made things quite modular, but what I'm going to do in this video is I'm just going to look at the top kind of five things, um, in my opinion, um, that I think are the most important things that you should know about. So when you're looking at Etherpad or considering Etherpad for your um, organization, you kind of know that these things exist. So the first thing is this plugin framework. Now plugins in this instance add this new uh, add new functionality. So here we've got the ability to uh, select a section and add a comment. So we can go, hello world. And this will then add a comment to this piece of text here. And when we hover over it, it lights it up. So this entire piece of functionality is handled as a plugin. And there are lots of plugins out there. There are hundreds of plugins. Um, be, be, whether you want to do video conferencing, whether you want to have image support inside of your pad, whether you want to have table support, whether you want to do, say, math um, functionality. So even here we can see um, just changing this to a heading to um, style. This is also done by plugins. Um, so you can see that plugins are extremely flexible. Um, what you're seeing here is mostly client-side plugins. Um, there is some server-side logic that's required for uh, handling comments, um, but there are additional server-side plugins such as um, email notifications, uh, server-side pad management, and authentication. And really, the, the best place to kind of uh, look for uh, new plugins is etherpad.org. Oh, static.etherpad.org slash plugins, I think. No, I have to remember where it is. I know it's static.etherpad.org uh, and it's plugins.html. Now, if you go to this page, I'll just actually bring it up in Chrome. So we've got that there. Um, you will see that there are all of these plugins available. So you can go through and find the one that suits you and, and provides the functionality that you need. Now, what you can also do is just use this uh, very simple admin interface to uh, enable and dis disable plugins. So here you'll see we've got the options to uninstall uh, the plugins that are already installed on beta.etherpad.org. And here you see we've got the available plugins. So these are the ones that we can go ahead and install. So you can see here, we get this very simple interface. And to get to that, we just browse to admin plugins. We go to the, oh, well, that'll bring the plugin manager up if you already hit there. And um, the actual admin page is just forward slash admin. And this is where you can then get through to these things. And in here, you can go through and change your settings and your uh, and also get some troubleshooting information about the number that you're running and the uh, git share. So lots of very useful stuff on plugin framework and management. Now let's look at accessibility. Now this is something that's been added recently or built upon recently. And we'll look at that as a first thing. So first thing we can look at is, is when we zoom into very, very, very close, you'll see that the icons uh, keep their fidelity. So they stay as high resolution icons. And that's because we're using font icons. Um, we're able to uh, keep uh, and support high resolution screens by, by doing that, which is very nice. Uh, we also have uh, I18N, which is uh, roughly translates to internationalization. In fact, it's the first and the last characters with 18 in the middle of internationalization. And you can see we can easily switch that over. Uh, we can change this over to um, Arabic, I assume, or something along those lines. Um, and we have support for all of these different languages. Um, some of the support, as you can see here, is still coming through, and it's the Translate Wiki guys that are taking care of that. Um, let's change that back to British English because that is the best language in the world ever. Um, true, true story. Um, so that is a, a really useful thing for uh, for non-English uh, users. Um, on top of that, uh, from an accessibility accessibility perspective. We do provide additional functionality, such as being able to access the edit bar. As if you see up in the top left corner, you will see the, um, that I'm using my keyboard to navigate through uh, menu options. And I get to that by pressing Alt F9. 
Uh, we have functionality to get to say the chat window and to restore focus back to the pad by pressing escape and a bunch of really nice keyboard shortcuts. If you look through the accessibility documentation at keyboard shortcuts, you will find them. Now on top of that, there's some more accessibility stuff. Can, can there be more? Yes, there can. Uh, we provide um, full support for screen readers. So uh, if you are a screen reader user, you will be very familiar with how screen readers work and we provide full uh, pad editing support for you. Uh, please do give it a go. Let us know what you think. It's a relatively new thing. We've only uh, implemented it about a month ago. So let us know. Now, on top of that, we do provide a lot of accessibility in the way of client library. So if I type in etherpad client library, should get there we go. So this is a HTTP. So this is for accessing the API and we provide a Ruby, JavaScript, Python, Perl, PHP, Java, Objective-C and .NET clients. And this is for accessing again, the API. We also provide a card client, uh, Node.js. Let me see if I can get the right one. Da, da, da. Uh, Etherpad CLI client, that's the one. So we also provide an Etherpad CLI client. Now the CLI client has some pretty interesting functionality. What you're able to do with the CLI client is literally just connect to a pad from your CLI. So let's quickly do that from here. Uh, let's see if we can find it in my history with the command already. Nope, just SSH, which is not that useful for us. So if I type in eth, uh, beta.etherpad.org slash p slash hello, what that should do, there we go. So if I then browse to hello on here, put this pad over there, and then I type something, you'll see that the uh, my CLI is updating with the contents from the pad. So again, this is just another way of accessing your pad contents. You're able to access your pad contents directly in your uh, command line, which is super useful. And it's updated in real time as well, which is very nice indeed. So the only other thing that we've done on accessibility, and I know it seems like we've done a lot on accessibility, and that's because accessibility is super important, is um, in January we in, in, in January we introduced Etherpad export and import. Now, the way that that's different from any other collaborative editor or any other editor is we provide absolutely every granule of data about that document. So if you go on to say Google Docs or 365 and you export your document, you're gonna get that document in that state. You may get previous revisions, but what they'll do is they'll strip out a lot of that data. You also won't get the ability to host those documents locally. So again, if you're using uh, 365, you will lose some of that um, document revision data as you go through to Microsoft Word or, or a local piece of software. And the same exists as a problem for, say, Google Docs and all editors. Uh, what we focused on and worked on quite heavily with the Etherpad export and import is the ability to maintain absolutely every single keystroke and edit and author uh, that's ever worked on a single pad. So you can always pinpoint or you can always take a document exactly as it is on one Etherpad instance, go to another Etherpad instance and import that document onto that new Etherpad instance and you will have absolutely every single piece of data that you had previously. So that's really important as far as um, if we, for our uh, more enterprise clients, uh, level clients which are doing legal documents, for example, um, we have some documentation inside um, large legal organizations and, and they require the ability to audit how a document uh, has evolved and changed. Uh, and we're big on trying to support the legal system as far as uh, accountability. So um, say for example, in the US where you've got uh, different people writing legislation, we want to know who modified which specific piece of legislation at what time uh, and, and, and also see if we can find out why they went and, and did that at that point. So that is everything as far as accessibility is concerned. Again, sorry that it seems like a lot. We have worked very hard in that area. So the next thing is huge performance increases. Now, I'm not going to be able to show you that so easily. But what I will do is um, I will bring up uh, a, an example of how we measure performance. So other than measuring uh, page load speed times, which is pretty elementary, um, we do a lot in the way of um, load testing. So let's bring up an instance, assuming I'm not doing, not got one up already, which it doesn't look like I have. 
Yep, we haven't got an upper edit. And then let's do some low pass and solo. Okay, so I've not got uh, I've not got one up already. So let's hit this up. So assuming that the server's already set up for it, uh, yeah, we can do it like this. So we can just do this. Let me just give it a second to actually make sure that the load test. Yep, there we go. So what this load testing tool is now doing is if I go to this URL, uh, which is 10.0.0.12 for me, slash piece of foo. Oh, need to put the part in. School by. Okay, what you'll see there is we're actually creating clients and we're throwing data at the pad and we're waiting to ensure that the, uh, the, the server's not going to time out. So we test this and we test it up to about 500 clients. And we basically are trying to find points that Etherpad will break at, uh, what, at the point where uh, the server will stop responding um, or will slow down responding. Um, this is it under a flag, um, but this kind of just shows you where we're at now. So the old version of Etherpad was kind of stable up to about 20 authors, um, but things did get shaky. And when things got shaky, the restart was horrible. Um, it was it was just really painful, the old stack. Um, so we've completely rewritten all of the logic that handles all of that. And all of the re we've written rewritten all of the testing uh, tools that we used, which has been a real joy to, to do and to uh, work on. And we're now able to have quite a lot of confidence that we can go up to about 250 people connected to a pad um, with maybe about 50 authors being quite active. Um, and at that point, you're going to start seeing your Node.js hit the ceiling of Node's performance. Um, so at that point, what we do with our enterprise instances is we just shard pads off to different um, Node threads. It's very simple to do. Um, so you can have Etherpad running at huge scale uh, without too much complexity at all. And there are various Etherpad instances that do that. So that's how we go ahead and test it. And I'm going to leave that actually just running in the background so that we can hopefully hit the uh, limits and we will I will be able to show you that in real time. Um, now, this may be interesting doing these tests. Oh, actually, I can probably test front end. Let's see. Let's see what happens. It's always magic when you try doing many things at once. OK, so here you can see our front, front end tests being run. Um, we also have a Travis runner that runs all of our tests in different browsers. Um, but you can see uh, if you do some work on Etherpad or if um, you want to make sure that the piece of functionality is working properly as intended, uh, you can just hit up forward slash test forward slash front end on any Etherpad instance. And this will actually run the tests in your browser. So this is how we do automated front end testing. And then we have automated back end testing as well, which I shall show you. Whilst this instance is running, this is a lot of fun, um, and it's a great, it's a great way of just kind of showing you that uh, Etherpad is able to handle load. Um, but I think at some point things are going to get interesting. So here we go. Uh, I've just run all of the backend tests. Ah, right, here we can start seeing some uh, slowness here. So this should have been finished within a matter of milliseconds. Um, you can see why 144 clients. Uh, connected 37 authors currently working on that pad. So, you know, things are heavy. Um, there we go. So uh, that just ran all of the back end tests. So that's tested the API and all of the configuration uh, that we put through there, which is a lot. There's a lot of different tests on there. Um, we try to cover things as much as possible. Uh, and what having all this test coverage gives us is the ability to have great stability. Uh, we provide a lot of monitoring tools um, so that site admins can keep an eye on their Etherpad instances, um, especially enterprise level Etherpad users need to know that their uh, Etherpad is going to stay up uh, given their uh, load test and use case. Uh, and so when they do do an, up, uh, an Etherpad upgrade, they can just, you know, get pull the latest changes and run their back end tests and run the front end tests. You'll actually see that test here is failing because things are slowing down because we've got how many people now connected? Hey, 188 people connected on this pad now, so things are starting to get heavy, which is what we expect. Um, and then on top of the whole stability thing, text was beautifully into our uh, CVE work that we've been doing recently. So we've had a lot of security audits done recently, uh, and you will see 
all of our uh, CVEs have been published under a responsible disclosure. We now have a security manager for the community who is doing an absolutely fantastic job at handling all of our security announcements and uh, kind of pushing us to release and kind of cracking that whip on us, which is something that we definitely needed and we're definitely now doing and absolutely nailing it, which is great. Um, big shout out, I think at this point, should go to Stefan who has been handling nearly all of the releases for about the last 10 or 15 releases. And that has been fantastic. Uh, saved me a lot of time, saved the community lots of time, and really has been doing a great job getting those releases out. So thank you, Stefan. So the final thing is something that I can't really show you so easily, um, but it's commercial support. And commercial support is something that we've uh, been offering for a while now. And um, the great thing is uh, Etherpad developers can now not earn money per se, but can build a career off the back of doing some Etherpad work, which is fantastic. Um, that's where we want it to be. We want it to be at a point where people could have, uh, you know, a, a kind of uh, a career um, building off the back of Etherpad. And we've made it flexible enough so that people have been able to do that. So I just wanted to take this opportunity to thank all of our commercial backers, all of our uh, sponsors who have all been great. And also the entire community that um, continues to support the software and continues to work on it. Things are uh, looking really exciting for the rest of 2015. Um, we don't have any set goals for 2015 of things that we desperately want to get out. But we are working towards um, increased stability, um, more accessibility, and just general fruity, juicy goodness. If you've got any ideas for plugins, get them written. Uh, we're there to support you. And you can catch us on IRC uh, on Freenode, which is the uh, etherpad light dash dev channel. Or you could just jump into the Etherpad channel and chat there. Uh, we're also uh, on a mailing list and various other places. So if you jump on etherpad.org, you'll find links for us there. So if you've been considering Etherpad for your um, organization, hopefully this uh, video has given you some confidence uh, and also just a bit of insight about how flexible Etherpad is and uh, kind of why you guys should be using it. Um, if you've got any questions or if you've got any comments, then please do post them uh, below the blog post or on the YouTube video. And uh, I'm hoping that this uh, load test is going to get to a point where it says, nope, no more. Uh, we're up to 246 lurkers and 82 authors. I'm pretty, there we go. Okay, so you actually can see here, uh, it gets to uh, a certain level of commits where until the server replies, and then it stops running the load test. Uh, if I look at HTOP now, um, oh, actually it's already cleared its memory. Damn, I was hoping that I'd be able to show you some heavy, usage load oh there we go actually so um my cpu load or one of my cpus is at 101 percent um and that's just the nature of the beast so uh, thanks for watching and i hope to see you all soon bye bye